Bonjour, bonjour Shopify world. In this video, you are going to learn exactly how to use GT metrics to understand your Shopify store speed performance. So if you stick to the very end of this video, you are going to learn all the secrets and all the little tricks on how to really use the GT metrics tool like a real pro. So let's get straight into it. Okay, but before we continue, why don't you um, gently, but very gently, it's super important destroy that subscribe button and the like button because it makes literally a huge difference for us okay so when i started when i used to have a shopify store they told me hey page speed optimization is important and then someone drew me in front of a gt metrics report and i had no idea what i was looking at so this is what we're going to get over first you go to gtmetrics.com and as you can see that's what you basically get now most people don't log in but at the very end of the video i'm going to explain to you why you should log in um let's cover the basics first so um there is this website called greats they sell shoes they're based out of brooklyn i guess i think and they're a shopify store i know that for a fact so first what you're going to see here is while it's testing the page it's going to say a server region vancouver canada and as long as you were with Shopify, it doesn't really matter where you're testing from because Shopify has a really, really good server network that's distributed all over the world. So your site should load as fast if you load it from Vancouver, Canada, as if you would do it from Antwerp, Belgium, or from Beijing, China. It should all go as fast. Now, I'm oversimplifying it a bit, but that's basically the gist of the story another thing i want to grab your attention on is right here it says it used chrome together with the version of chrome it used now for most shopify store owners again this won't matter however it will matter for a couple of them if you have an audience that you know uses safari more than chrome or if you have an audience that you know that uses internet explorer or firefox then you definitely want to adapt that and the reason for that is especially if you have code modification done by external developers or Shopify experts like myself, some experts don't optimize for all browsers. So it is possible in theory that some of the code that you have built on top of your out of the box Shopify doesn't perform as well on certain browsers. And that's kind of annoying if you're targeting a market that's all on Safari. So know your market, that's kind of the conclusion. But for the vast majority of Shopify store owners, again, Chrome is gonna be fine. The next thing that we see right here is page speed versus the Y slow. So what exactly does that mean? So, well, the internet is managed by a couple of bohemias, a handful. And in this specific case, we're looking at the tools of Google and the tools of Yahoo, which I'm not really implementing their bohemians. But yes, so they're still on there. And what's really happening here is GT Metrics isn't really reinventing the wheel. They're not doing any calculations or they're not figuring out how fast your store is themselves. Instead, they're just asking google hey google how fast is this store and this is the page speed resort that you see here the same they do with yahoo and they say hey yahoo how fast is this store and yahoo answers well this store scores a 62 out of 100 which is a really random number like the fact that they put numbers on it i find a bit random but i understand it though but anyway that's beside the point but by now you might have asked yourself how come google has a different page speed result than yahoo well they each try to do their best guess on the page speed it's kind of complex to calculate how fast a store really is because there's no human checking it so you have to do it with code and you kind of have to standardize it and not every speed checker uses the same methods to come to the conclusion of how fast it is so that is why you will see different scores now which one should you pay attention to Let's be honest, the internet's run by Google for now. You want to rank high in your SEO, you want to do Google ads, you most likely want to look at Google. I mean, sure, the why slow is interesting, but Google. Okay, right next to this, we have the fully load time. So this is basically the number of seconds that it took for the client to say, enter, I want to go to grades.com, and the number of seconds that the page is comp ugh, page that the page is completely loaded. So the entire thing, every little snippet of code, every little app is loaded. What's important to know though, is that the user probably has already started using 
this specific page before the 17 seconds were over. So most likely you can start interacting with the page around five to maybe 10 seconds, and you just have a whole bunch of apps that are still loading even while the user is already shopping. So it doesn't really take a fully 17 seconds. This is until it's fully loaded. That's really important to understand, and I'll come back to that later in the video. What you can also see here are the averages. So if on average, they say that it's 7.9 seconds for a website to fully load. Okay, but that's not e-commerce specifically. And I think this is the perfect moment to say you should probably use testmystorespeed.com if you're on Shopify. I'm a bit biased because we built the app, but that is Shopify specific information. And 7.9 seconds, you know, that's the average of the entire internet, not e-commerce. You want to be lower than that on e-commerce. But next to it, you have the total page size. Okay, so this is how heavy the page really is. Logically, the lighter the page, the faster it's going to act because the page is just a file or actually it's a whole bunch of files that are getting loaded. And the least amount of files, the lighter these files are, the faster it's going to load. And again, here you have the average of the internet. This is not e-commerce average. Again, very important to know the difference. And then finally, you have the number of requests. You see, your store is not just one file. The homepage is not just one file. It's tons of little files. You have the Facebook pixel that comes from Facebook. And then you have the Clavio, you know, email marketing code that comes from here. And then you got some images from here and an app from here and some stuff from Shopify. It's a whole bunch of files that are loaded into one page. And every time it goes and gets one of those files, it's a request. So in this case, for the page to fully load, the computer, your browser of the visitor had to do 288 requests to get all the information to build this page so that the user can start scrolling. This is huge, 288. I mean, here they're saying the average number of requests is 88. Again, it's different in e-commerce, but you definitely want to keep that under control, especially because mobile browsers, they're not very good at handling a huge amount of requests. So this is where you're going to lose money when you serve ads and you have a very high bounce rate. It's probably because your page is too slow because you have too many requests because the mobile browser just can't crunch that many numbers at the same time. Okay, we're going to go over the page speed tab in just a minute as well as the Y flow. But first, I want to get your attention to the waterfall fall tabs. I made a separate video about waterfalls and explaining them into the very last detail because frankly this page is telling you everything you need to know about how fast a specific page is. Remember when I said that the homepage of this specific website greats.com has 288 requests like we can see here? Well here you can see all 288 of them. They're all different files, like I mentioned before. These are all different files that the, the browser went to get in different locations. And why a waterfall is so great is because they lay out each and every file. And they also lay out the order in which each of these files got loaded. So they started with, you know, here making a request to grades.com. And then they ask Shopify, hey, send me all of the SCSS from grades, which is basically all the styling and all the pretty colors and stuff like that. And then every time you can see the browser made a different request to all of those different areas. Actually, the like sixth request or something like that is to Google Tag Manager. They want to ask to Google like, hey, send me like all the information for the tags and so on and so on. And they did this 288 times, as we mentioned. Now, What's interesting here is that you can see how heavy each of these files are and how they got loaded over time. So this is second number zero, and this is the 17.4 seconds when it's loaded. So this is a timeline. It goes like this. And you can see every file that got loaded in order that they got loaded and how long each file took as well as the size of each file. So the bottom line on a waterfall is that you can scroll really easily through this and immediately pick out the big files. Like here, 602, 606 milliseconds. On top of it, it's red. That means something. It's probably an error code. The file didn't even get loaded properly, but it held up a bunch of other files and it took 606 milliseconds to load. That's a problem. Let's see if we can find another big one. Here, 690 seconds. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. 
Then here, oh, 1.93 seconds. That is a widget from Privy. That's not very good, guys. Especially if you don't need Privy on the homepage, why the hell is it loading there then? And like that, you can immediately pick up the problem file. So waterfalls are a great, great, great tool to understand and just to look at it. And with a glance, you can immediately pick them out, the problem makers. Now, before we head to the other ones, let's go to PageSpeed. Again, these are the results of Google and these are the results of Yahoo. Uh, we're going to focus on Google. So Google tries to get an idea of how fast a specific store is and they look at certain categories and they give you the types here. They look at, let's take on my sheet, cheat sheet. They look at content, server, JavaScript, images, and CSS. Now, if that kind of sounds like Chinese to you, or rambling in case you speak Chinese, don't worry about it. You don't really know, need to know the details of it. What you do need to know is as a general rule is that not everything that is written on these types of reports of GT metrics, you can actually action on Shopify because Shopify has its limitations in a very good way. For example, you don't have access to the Shopify server and that's fantastic news. Trust me, you don't want access to the server. So in this specific case, it's saying, hey, you have a server issue. Well, you can't really do anything about that. And as a side note, usually 98% of the time, the server issues that they are mentioning are not on the side of Shopify. They're server issues of all the apps that you have downloaded and put on your Shopify store because Shopify is pretty good at managing their servers. What you can look at, however, are the image tags. Now, I'm not going to go in this video over exactly what needs to be done with the images. You can check out the other video that I made about images, but you can look at images, content, and in some cases, you can look at JavaScript. Sometimes it's your internal website JavaScript, so you can go and yell at your developer for that. But sometimes it's, again, those damn apps that you've installed. And you can kind of see here every time where the issue is. For example, here, it's a Snapchat issue. It says Snapchat. Can't really do anything about that. Or, for example, Hotjar. Can't really do anything about that. So, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Okay, and as a bonus point here, I really recommend you to actually sign up with GT Metrics. It's 100% free. By the way, this video is not sponsored, and it's just going to give you that additional information. Specifically, there is one thing you want to look at. So, okay, once you are logged into GT Metrics, you can click on Analysis right here. And analysis is going to give you the option to change the device which, which you are testing with. And this can be quite useful. It also tells you to change the destination if you want or the browser if you want. Um, but we're looking at the device particularly, especially if you run a lot of ads that are focused to mobile users. If people find you on mobile, if people shop with you on mobile, which is most stores these days, you want to kind of check out what the most popular mobile device is, and you definitely want to test with that. Let's say we're going to do with an iPhone, Apple, obviously, um, 7, 8 plus, and we're going to test greats again. Dot com. And we're going to test it again. And this is going to give you a different result as with the desktop. Because again, mobile browsers are just not as powerful. That's that's it. That's the end of the, the argument. So it's going to give you a different result. And you definitely want to be aware of this different result. And another advantage that you have if you sign in is the timings tab. You can actually look at the timings. And it gives you a pretty clear information about what every uh, element does in the loading time. So what you're looking at is the total unload. When it's fully loaded and unload, it's not the same thing. I'll let you read the little text, it's very explanatory. Um, but there's different stages in the loading and you might wanna be aware of it and read the little text because it's gonna help you forward quite a lot. Okay, this is it for the GT Metrics video. Again, I highly recommend that if you're a Shopify store owner, you check out testmystorespeed.com because it's tailored specifically to you. And also check out the other videos where I explain what you can do with your images exactly, what minimizing is, what waterfall work in even more detail, what you should be aiming for as fully 
load time or as total page size and request and what you can do about it and much, much more. I really try to get as much knowledge as I can from PageSpeed Optimization over to you. And if you just don't want to deal with it, you can just contact our team and we will do a full speed optimization on your website, which should result in lower bounce rate on your ads, which should result in higher conversion and more money in your pocket. My name is Andrew from ecomexperts.io. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.